Hello, welcome to another lesson of music theory. This is grade 2, week 1, brought to you by To Enable. This week we will take a look at claves and compass. Claves and compass, let's do a bit of revision. Remember that in the previous grade we had learned about treble claves and that they are also, a treble clef is also called the G clef because it circulates around the G line. And at this stage, we know how to write the treble clef and the bass clef sign. Remember that the treble clef sign is for high pitch instruments and the bass clef sign for low pitch instruments. Also, the bass clef is called the F because of the spot uh, that starts on the fourth line, which is F, and the two dots between the third and fourth line, putting the F in between. Examples on how to draw the treble clef. As we have said, it curves around the G line. This is the G line, the second line of the treble clef. Going up, do not cross the B. Going down, do not go below the E. Then up, 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 then you tuck it in, it comes back inside, down, 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 below the first line of the treble clef. Then, there you go. You should have something like this. The bass clef, spot and clef starts on the fourth line. This is the fourth line. There is the spot. It must not go over this line. And you can curve it down till your second line of the bass clef. Then putting our two spots on the third and fourth spaces. Don't forget this. Remember also we labeled our lines and spaces for both clefs. And we had used a phrase, every good boy does fine or deserves food. Uh, e for the first line of the treble clef. G, second line of the treble clef. B, the third line. D for deserve uh, on the fourth line and F our last line of the treble clef. Then we use the word phrase F for the first space of the treble clef, A second space, C third space, E sorry E for the last space. Then for the bass clef the lines Gary Beck does funny X. And we had said you can create your own little phrases to help you remember the five lines of the clefs. G as the first line, backs, B for backs, second line, D, third line, F, funny, fourth line, and the last line, A for X. Space is the first space is represented by A, A for all, C for cows, E for eat, G for grass. These are the lines and spaces for both treble and bass clef. We had also covered ledger lines. Remember that ledger lines are lines and spaces above or below the staff. So these are lines and spaces above or below the staff. The main purpose is to cover or accommodate notes that are higher than the staff. For example, we have notes that would go maybe higher than the last line of the treble clef then those notes need to be accommodated on the ledger lines and spaces. Also notes that fall below maybe the first line of the bass clef, which is G. Then the note would be F. It will have to fall on the spaces and ledger lines for the bass clef. Remember the distance between the ledger lines and the spaces should be the same as the lines and spaces on the staff. Keep the distance the same. Each note should have its own ledger line. Remember, we are avoiding unnecessary ledger lines above or below notes. To find the correct letter names above the staff, count upwards from the fifth line. Your fifth line should be your last line of the staff. So count five lines. Uh, count five. Uh, count upwards from the fifth line in the treble. Or bass clef and to find the correct let letter names below the staff count downwards from the last line from the last line you count downwards both bass and treble clef notes on the ledger line
below the treble clef fall in the bass clef. And also note uh, above the bass clef fall into the treble clef. This is the grand stuff. It represents both treble and bass clef combined. The middle C, remember, is the same for the treble clef and the bass clef. This is where your middle C is located. Note what we mean when we say notes on the ledger line below the treble clef. So notes from this line, this is your E. That means from D, it should fall on your bass clef. But now we just write them on the ledger lines. Also notes above this last line of the bass clef, they fall on the treble clef. That means all the notes above the middle C will go on the treble clef. Notes below the middle C will go on the bass clef ledger lines this picture illustrates ledger lines as we have mentioned on the previous page this is f so you just count upwards from the last line so this is the last line to determine notes on the base left so it's remember it's always line space then line again space keep the same ledger line for a but avoid the extra ledger line on top because we do not need it, but we're going to need it after the space comes line C. That's when you draw your ledger line. Then you keep both uh, A line and the C to get your D. So this is A, C, then you have your D on the space. Same goes. So same goes for your base clef. Notes below the ledger line. You count from the last line. To get your D on the space, C on the line, B on the space. All these notes, they can fall on the bass clef. Notes above the treble clef, F, G, A, B, C, D. Notes below the treble clef, D, C, B, A, G, etc. Notes like B, A, G below the middle C fall on the bass clef. So this is the B, C. And this is the middle C. This should be your middle C, which is somewhere here, if we're not using ledger lines. Then B, A, they start falling on the base clef. Then D, since it's above the middle C, will fall on this D, is the same as this one, same pitch. Right, this is your middle C. So A is on the fifth line of the bass clef and G is on the fourth space of the bass clef. So this is the fifth line. Notes above the bass clef. Notes like D, E, F above the middle C fall on the treble clef. So D, this is the D I'm talking about. E should be somewhere here. Uh, somewhere here. This should be your E. Then F obviously will take the first space of the treble clef. So E is on the first line of the treble clef. And F the first space of the treble clef. Like I've just explained. Clefs can change at a certain point in a song. The change can happen between bars or notes in a measure. A new clef is introduced before the bar line to indicate changes of pitches. Sometimes we find that a new clef is placed before a phrase. See examples below. So our clef, the given clef, is the bass clef. As the music progresses, a new clef is introduced before the bar line. This means starting from this bar, from this point, all the notes will fall on the treble clef. Then another new clef is introduced, the bass clef. Then from here is the bass clef. Notes fall on the bass clef. Then another clef is introduced. Treble clef again. Then you play notes on the treble clef. You read this as the treble clef until a new clef is introduced. There we go. The bass clef again. All these notes, they fall on the bass clef. Treble clef. Notes. So on and so on. Bass clef. Treble clef is introduced just before the new bar again. This one is introduced in the middle of the bar. But all this is not necessary. Remember, we mentioned 
your grand staff. This is your grand staff. Your grand staff should help you to notate like your changes. If you want to change, let's say for example, you want to change uh, in the middle of a bar, like here. You want to introduce a clef in the middle of the bar. Instead of writing a new clef, rather write the notes on the treble clef or on the bass clef on the grand staff. So you would rather use your grand staff here. So if you want you you want the next note on the treble clef, just write on the treble clef and the next note on the bass clef. Then having to introduce uh, clefs all over the bar is this is just meant to to decrease confusion and make reading music easier now let's move on to in harmonic equivalent in harmonic equivalent is also known as in harmonic change this means notes that are equivalent to other notes but are spelled or named differently using different names for one thing so an in harmonic equivalent means that notes are equivalent to each other but they use different names let's see examples for example a c sharp is equivalent to a d flat but they are spelled differently a d sharp is the same as an e flat e sharp same as f your e is the same as f flat f sharp is the same as g flat your G sharp is the same as A flat. Your A sharp is the same as B flat. Your B sharp is the same as C. Your B is the same as C flat. In harmonic equivalent or in harmonic change. In harmonic equivalent or in harmonic change. Below are in harmonic equivalent notes on the staff. This is how they will look on the staff. This is your C sharp. Moving to D sharp, it's the same. D sharp moving to E flat, same. This note is F sharp. Your F sharp is the same as your G flat, and your G sharp would be the same as your A flat. This is where your A sharp is positioned, will be the same as playing your B flat. They sound the same but they are spelled differently just because simply because of different key signatures that's why we spell them differently if you are in a key that has flats you cannot uh, you you would have to use flats to spell that particular note your e sharp is the same as your f natural and your f flat is the same as your e natural this is your e natural put a natural sign next to it and your B sharp is the same as your C natural. Your C flat is the same as your B natural. In harmonically, equivalent pitches are indicated by ties. Like here, for example, this is your C sharp and your D flat. We use ties to indicate your in harmonics. This is how they would be displayed. On the keyboard you see and your C sharp C moving okay so basically this is C moving to C sharp so C sharp shares the same note as D flat D flat and E flat are the same F sharp and G flat are the same also here this can be spelled as an E natural or as an F flat. It's the same. Or E sharp or F. A flat or G sharp. B flat or A sharp. Then this can be your B natural or C flat. C natural or B sharp. 